Young women have been growing up with an indoctrination of what womanhood is and what it should be. They've been taught everything that is in direct opposition to the Word of God. Young women who want to be different from the world are rare, but they are real. On this Rare But Real podcast, Audrey Brogy will often be joined by her daughter, Grace Anna, and her daughters-in-law, Maureen, Kesset, and Marilyn, who desire to be discerning in a day when everything seems to go against God's design. Join them in the journey of becoming rare but real. It takes courage and conviction. And now, Audrey Brogy. Hey, I'm so thankful that you are listening to this podcast today, and I'm thankful today to be joined by my my daughter-in-law, Kessid, and I will give the floor to her in just um, a few minutes, but I want to remind you that we are doing um, a little series that I've titled Read Your Bible, and that title came out of, we did a women's event a couple weeks ago where my daughter came and she shared a Bible reading plan with our women. I had seen her do this at her church, and, and And asked her if she would come do it at our church for our women. And I can't even begin to say how much so many women in our church have have been. It's just been such a great thing right here at Community Bible Church to do it. And um, and it just gave me an idea to do a series on that because I have witnessed and seen my daughter and my daughters-in-law have the habit of reading their Bibles and studying their Bibles. And I've seen them, um, obviously, with my daughter growing up and seeing her love for God's word as she grew and matured and and seeing how she was spending time with the Lord on her own, not just what we were doing as a family or what I was doing with her individually as my daughter, but I saw her own it. I saw her uh, own her own relationship with the Lord when she came to trust him and then um, start um, on her journey of studying her Bible and giving her different tools. I also saw that with my sons as well, but obviously we're doing a women thing, so so, um, it's, it's just been neat to do to see that and then as she grew into a young woman and and then married and with a family and seeing that come to fruition in her own family's life and I've had the privilege and honor to witness that in uh, Kessid's um, life as well. Obviously, I didn't know her when she was growing up or as a teenager or even in college, but I've certainly seen as I've gotten to know her over these years, her love for the Word. I've seen her um, have Bible studies with her own daughters. I've seen her help them memorize the Word. I have witnessed her even leading other young girls in Bible study or having a heart to do that with them. And it's just been like, you know, it's just been the greatest thing as as a mom and a mom-in-law to witness these things and to know that um, God's faithfulness is to every generation and to see that happening in their families. And um, and I will say this on a personal note, I had... Um, You know, Carl and I are trying. We don't know how long we'll live to be able to do this, but you know, we have thirteen grandchildren so far, and um, and I don't know. We just started when our oldest Jack turned thirteen. We wanted to start having them come by themselves to our home to have like a special time with us as they t- became came into their teenage years. And so we've had Jack and we've had Luke and we, and we just had Lois in August and. And Kessid, I know you're there, and it was just such a great time with your oldest mm. daughter, not only just being able to spend time with her, uh, just just in a fun way, but she just asked such great perceptive questions, not just about mm. life in general, but about the Bible. And one of right. the... Um, And one of the greatest blessings to me was not something that I was actually involved in, but I witnessed it because she was sitting out um, in the front yard with her granddaddy and she was asking him questions, peppering him with some different questions and, and, and just gleaning. And he was explaining so many doctrinal things to her. And again, it's just you know, a 13 year old young woman wanting to learn more about the Bible. And uh, Mm -hmm. I just thought that was great. And that's just a great testimony to both you and Jeremy. And of course, as you know, Kessit, Carl and I pray all the time for our grandchildren, not just for y'all, because we pray for y'all, but we pray individually for our grandchildren and, and, um, and that God's faithfulness, Psalm 78, will um, continue on um, in the years to come. So anyway, with all that being said, let me remind everybody what I want you 
to talk about or what I want you to share today. And it's, um, I want you to talk about how you read, study God's word on your own, maybe what that's been like as you've grown up and what you've mm-hmm. owned and taken advantage of as you've, as you grew up. And then, um, of course, as a single person, you know, or even in college, all those things, how did that grow with you? Cause I know you came to Christ fairly early in life. And then of course, as you've gotten married, um, what that looked like in practical ways with you and Jeremy together, and then what you do with your children and how that's the dynamic has changed as they've grown up, how you in, encourage them. I also would love for you to touch on, you know, um, the maybe family Bible times with dad. I've witnessed that as well. I've witnessed that in all of my, in, in Jordan's family and Grace Anna's family and your family, um, mm. seeing all that. And I, so I want to hear that. And I know our, our, so many women would like to hear that. And then to it, you can also share struggles that you've had with maintaining consistent time in the word or uh, mm-hmm. what you've found to be your greatest help over the years or some of the things that maybe you used at a certain time but you don't do now or you do this now and you don't do that or whatever. And, uh, and then just, again, talk about the changing dynamics of the different seasons and stages of your life. So with yeah. that said, <laughs> I'm going to give the floor to you and I want you just to Go for it. And then if I want to interrupt yeah. you, I just will. <laughs> oh, well, that's do it. Yeah. That's, um, that's great. You know, it's funny. So we, I go to Chevrolet Baptist Church and we just had our women's retreat this last weekend. And um, that we shared just on this topic of like how God's word has sustained us just at like a, just a few minutes from a number of women um, in the body. So I just recently just shared a few minutes mm. with my sisters at my in my local church about um, how it has sustained and encouraged me. And I started out because you were saying <laughs> I've, I've known the Lord since I was a child. My parents um, read the word to us as kids. Um, I was in church every time it was open, you know, yeah. so Sunday morning, we had Sunday school uh, in the morning and then worship and then Sunday evening prayer service and choir practice and then Monday night visitation and then uh, Wednesday night, you know, GAs, Girls in Action mm-hmm. or Mission Friends when I was younger <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. So there was a lot that was not just my parents, but it was lots of just faithful believers pouring into my life and, and teaching me the word of God. Um, but in spite of that, in spite of everyone's best <laughs> efforts, I just have these vivid memories. And, and I don't know that this is bad, but it was certainly because um, these things were encouraging to me and I was reading the Bible, but it was definitely a misinterpretation. I remember being at summer camp. Um, it was just church camp. So mm-hmm. the kids from you know my local church and I didn't like the counselor I got. It was this middle-aged man, bless his heart, you know, <laughs> who was who was just nice there trying to, you know, serve the kids. But it's not as fun as like a young, cool girl or something like that. <laughs> and so I was, we were having our little quiet time away from everybody. And I was praying that I would get to go have a different counselor. And I read the scripture that is about the Holy Spirit about ask and I will give you a new counselor who will be with you forever. Well, that's not, <laughs> but to me, I was like, whoa, this is, you, you know, this is pretty amazing. Anyways, I had, I can remember vividly other experiences like that where it's just like, <laughs> just kind of haphazardly reading God's word and being like, a little away. mystical about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do think in terms of like, systematic study of the word that really didn't come until I was older. Honestly, one of the best tools for that was leading a small group where it was like, okay, we're going to be studying this book of the Bible. So we're just going this a chapter at a time. And so I had been through school, so I knew how to study text, you know, you mm-hmm. how you read. And, and so it was like, okay, so really leading this girl small group in church was one thing that helped me um, get into regular study. And then um, these studies that we did, they, they taught inductive studies, just like at my mm-hmm. church. And then Carrie Fulmer put out a series of studies 
Um, one, they're each on a different book of the Bible. I think she's got about five or six. And crazy enough, she ended up being our uh, speaker at our mm-hmm. women's retreat, um, which I got to thank her in person because these really, it, there was not fluff. It was literally just leading you through mm-hmm. studying the word of God and using scripture to interpret scripture. Yeah. And just like, what does the text say? What does that mean? Then what does it mean to you? Just very mm-hmm. straightforward. And that was a huge help to me. Um, so I think that, you know, around my early 20s is when it really got uh, more careful and fruitful. But even then, so I got married. I had a kiddo and then another one and another one. And it was very much like, Maybe I would read, you know, New Morning Mercies, or maybe I would be, which has like a scripture and then a passage. So it was, I was kind of all over the map Mm -hmm. um, all through that time. But when we went to Cambridge for law school, Mm -hmm. I started a, it was a MacArthur read through the Bible, um, Bible. Bible, yeah. So we already had it like by day by yes, day. Exactly yes, yes. So I read through the Bible in a year through that Bible. And it's one of those things where it's like once you start doing it, mm-hmm. you can't stop doing right, it. Right. And, um, and so at that point, I really realized how much I didn't know, mm-hmm. how many gaps there were. And I think in part that's just because my brain you know, doesn't make connections. I don't know. It's just like, I, cause I, I mean, I would, I do know. And I would swear like you guys just poured scripture into Jeremy, his whole upbringing. Mm. But I also would say he's got a, that kid. I mean, he's got a brain on it. My husband, <laughs> I just, am, I realized that's part of it too. I'm like, Oh, you just remember everything you read. So that must, that's a nice option. Um, but I don't. So then I really decided I want to just start at the beginning and outline God's word. Mm -hmm. And so I started to have these little, just like spiral notebooks and it was just me sloppy writing, you know, reading a few chapters and just writing big picture what happened and maybe copying a piece of scripture that was like a passage that was encouraging or challenging to me. And that was so sweet. I mean, if you look at my notebooks, it looks like a bunch of ransom notes. It's so, <laughs> so, so like frightening looking. But um, just digging more and more into God's word. And it, and it got to the point, I would say, homeschooling mm-hmm. uh, and doing all these things where it was like, oh, man, like it is not a discipline anymore. It is a survival mm-hmm. necessity. Like I need God's word every day mm-hmm. to to feed me. It's my daily bread. I need That's that right. encouragement. I need to get my head straight because actually getting your head straight can be it can hurt, mm-hmm. but it's also so life giving. Right. Because when you are going through your day selfishly, when you're going through your day irritated and um, discontented and lazily, all of these things that God's word corrects. That's right. It, yeah. That is not fair fruit. It's really kind of a miserable way to live. And it turns out that, that these are some of my default ways to live. So I feel like being in God's word, it has just been so life-giving to the point where it's almost like exercise, right? Like mm-hmm. when you start mm-hmm. out exercise, it's, <laughs> It's awful. It just it does not feel good. It is just like it's torturous. But then once you are in a regular routine of exercise, I mean, you hate to miss it. Right, you know, right. it, it feels good. It gives you this, that's kind of how I feel about time in the word. It's like, oh, I, can mm-hmm. I just like carve out some time here to to see? Yeah. Anyhow, so right now what I'm doing is a um, two-year 
Bible reading plan with a group of women at church. Mm -hmm. And so that has been really sweet. Every once in a while, we'll, you know, send each other an email to say like, you know, yay, you got, you made it through yeah this part of numbers it's got a little more of a slog or what I, whatever just or, sure hey did you guys read this in the psalms because usually it has like a few chapters from the old testament or well, right now because mm-hmm. that's where mm-hmm. we are we're in second chronicles and then either a psalm or a proverb and keep cycling back through the psalms and the proverbs right if that makes sense yeah yeah um and so just to have them and that encouragement and then uh for me, the just the consistency. It's it's really. I would highly recommend one, a one year reading. One year reading through the Bible program is great. I have done that a couple times. This pace for me is in this time of my life is excellent. Yeah. So, um, I guess I would just say, like God and His kindness helps me to be so desperate because of, you know, what a mess I was making of my regular days and my impatience and my da 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 that uh, scripture reading became less of a thing I needed to figure out when to do and remember to do mm-hmm. and became literally like my bread for the day. Um, so that has been a gift mm-hmm. uh, from him because it was not always that way. Yeah. Um, But then, so then for the kids, it's almost like the same thing happened um, where I realized with our homeschool day, we were just kind of like, it was chaos. I don't know. It just, (laughs) I mean, you know, my personality, it's like, oh, somebody, this person slept till then and this is going on and where are we and what's happening? And I just realized, wait, like, why am I homeschooling them? Mm-hmm. is what like what is the point of this and so really it's because I want to be obedient to be teaching them the word of the Lord when mm-hmm. you know when we walk by the way I want to be imparting this to them and so what better way to start out our day and just get a a rhythm right than start with God's word so mm-hmm. we started saying okay we're going to be up this time we're going to meet at the breakfast table and we're going to start with study of scripture. Mm -hmm. And um, that has been so life giving Mm -hmm. to our homeschool day where we gather around that. And, and some days it takes forever because there are lots of questions about it. And some days it's quick and it's like, but probably the most important thing that's happening in our day, right? Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's God's word. So um, that has just been really sweet. And then on top of that, I mean, so when the girls have stayed with you in the past, they've memorized scripture. Mm -hmm. um, And, but it really wasn't until Maureen was like, hey, let's memorize the, you know, Psalm 139 passage Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. share for um audrey mm-hmm. for her birth no was it, it was christmas? christmas it was christmas, it was your christmas yeah. present yeah so it was awesome. that we got we talked about this last that. time with grace anna oh yeah we talked about but it a little that bit that for me was like just a change like it was like oh we can memorize like so was it after that to- you started doing your scripture memory like in the morning with yeah. your girls that I've witnessed? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, totally. that's wonderful. That yeah. The, See, that's like the, incur- that's like encouraging one another, you know, totally, spurring each other totally. on. Yeah. So well, go ahead. And it just seems so like just like this big obstacle to me before that, right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, we should definitely be doing this, but but then to just well and to see how well they can do it, how yeah, quickly they can yeah, pick it up. Yeah. Um <laughs> And then, you know, I like doing it with my little motions. Uh So, well, and then that also led to, so our, um, Jeremy and I have took over Monday mornings at our little homeschool co-op, leading the kiddos. It's just the first 15 minutes in Bible time. Right. So I help with the scripture memory and he teaches the Bible lesson. Wow. Um, and it's funny because I do those motions, you know, <laughs> that I just make up. I and love really enjoy. it. And like one of the parents literally thought I was doing ASL. <laughs> so, and I was like, oh no, this is not sign language. This is literally, 
you know, I'm not just in case you know how oh, I love it. Are. She was yeah. probably counting that as her foreign language or something. I'm like, listen, ladies, no, this is not. This is not legitimate. Uh, this is not a legitimate extra. Language. But you know what, Kessid? It, 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 yeah, I'm sure it showed you the way. Like even the motions I made up to Psalm one years ago. That it's totally. it's easy to do it. I mean, you just you just don't worry about you know. And kids love it. You know, I mean, it. they love it, and it helps them learn the scripture. They love it, and yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, and it's just like okay. oh yeah, half <laughs> it the wind drives away exactly. um so anyway so that um that has been hugely encouraging to us just hiding god's word in our heart mm-hmm. um and and then we our church well it's funny so we were starting an awana program in it Literally, I can't remember the exact date in March of 2020 that it was supposed to start, but it was the Thursday that the world was shutting down. Mm. Like that was uh, yeah. the last Thursday of co-op for the kids. And so at March of 2020, it March of 2020, <laughs> and that's where we we're going to start our water program. Like that night, <laughs> and it was like, and the world shut down. But in God's kindness. That is starting this Sunday, um, <laughs> and that is just an, a, a ministry that I and other folks at our church wanted to have just to help kids to start mm-hmm. early, to hide God's Word in their heart. Yep. Um, because once again, to go back to Jeremy, I've seen him. Mm-hmm. He just knows God's Word. Mm-hmm. He, he can recall it when he's talking to the girls. He can... Um, We'll call it when he's talking to me and when I'm like, you know where it says that because I'm always just like very vague and like, I know in the Bible that it says, <laughs> and he's always knowing, oh, yeah, are you talking about, and, you know, tell me second Peter. Second Peter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are we going to say that? That was the exact same second Peter. Oh. <laughs> um, so mm. anyway, so that was part of my I knew this was a, a another piece of his childhood. And I was like, oh, OK, let's. Let's do this. Um, so, yeah. And then just thinking about the kiddos, he uh, he goes through the picture Bible with each of them. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that's just what it's called, right? Right. That's what it's Bible. called, the picture Bible. Yep. And he really enjoys that because we have, we've got all the children's Bibles, mm-hmm. like the, the storybook Bible, the, what's the Sally Lloyd-Jones one? The, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Just, and they call the story. One. Yeah. Maybe children's storybook Bible. Yeah, I don't know. So we, we have, and then the uh, Mich- Marty Machowski one, and we use that with your, right. there's lots of great ones, but this one, it almost looks like Cartoon. a comic, a comic book. book. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's not like the new, the action Bible, which no. is another one we have, but it, it's older. But it really tells, like, goes through the narrative. That's of the right. Old- That's right. right. It's not like verbatim the script. It's yes. It's like gives. It's kind of like giving an overview of the storylines, and you get the you get such yeah. a wonderful overview of scripture. And um, I really think that that provides because I see this with the girls. It's like pegs on which to hang it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to hang different things mm-hmm, later. So they mm-hmm. just get a good sense of it, and they love doing that with him oh man you know which is so sweet yeah i mean to see them too like wanting to do that rather than i don't know i know read some other book or play some game or you know do anything like that so right right um, yeah, and, and to beg for the next, could you just do the next section? I mean, our kids oh, yeah. used to do that. Just the next section. Oh, yeah. Okay, one more section, you know. And then <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so great. Our kids like love the picture Bible. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't remember what year it came out, but it was when our kids were, you know, I don't remember. But it seems like it's always been around because we've used it forever. It's really great. For those, of, you know, for people who want to know, it's the picture Bible, David C. Cook Publishing. Um, and it's still oh, available. There you go. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's definitely available. Yeah, yeah exactly. People ask us about it, and it's like, oh, there it is. Well, you what? How did you, how did you decide? Because you you remember memorizing um, Hebrews with the girls in the mornings. How did you decide to memorize Hebrews with them? I don't know if you were doing the whole 
book, but I know you were doing chapters. No, so we did Hebrews chapter 11. Um, that Oh, yeah, we had talked about that. It was really about uh, just looking at what was going on around them in, in, in the culture and the mm-hmm. world and seeing, like, things are, are getting more and more hostile to the faith, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so what is it going to look like for them? to walk as believers by faith when they are adults. And, and the account of Moses um, really struck me as like, Mm -hmm. just this, I want this hidden in their hearts. So they remember that this may be what it looks like um, to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. So let's see, what is it? By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, Mm -hmm. refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, Mm -hmm. considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for Mm -hmm. he was looking to the reward. And so I just, you know, talk with them about considering the reproach of Christ as greater riches than all the treasures of the United States of America. Like anything anybody can offer us, like the reproach of Christ is greater because we're looking forward to the reward. Mm-hmm. And so, and as I, as I'm encouraging them and asking them to be followers of Jesus and say, like, we say, oh, we're saved by faith, right? And mm-hmm. that's just a sense that he has done it all. Mm-hmm. But what does that look like in practice? Right. Right. And so just all of these examples um, from the Old Testament of people who were looking forward to the reward. And mm-hmm. so we... We memorize that, and then we ended up, Jeremy and I, doing, so we had the kids at school memorize those chapters, and then he led them through each of the stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so starting with creation. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then, you know, going through with Cain and Abel. Abe, uh-huh. and, and um, Enoch. Enoch, exactly. And so, and he uh, just walked them through that. So it was it was a sweet year. This year we're doing... So we are memorizing Matthew chapter 28, which starts Mm -hmm. with the women going to the tomb Mm -hmm. and, um, and the angel letting them know he's not here. He's risen, as he Mm -hmm. said, Mm -hmm. and then it ends with the great commission. And so we're talking about like, what were these people looking forward to by faith? Mm -hmm. Like it's this, this is what they were looking at the, you know, the Messiah coming, the, the once for all sacrifice. So they, they knew that God's salvation was coming and they were looking forward to that day and to the reward of being with him in heaven. But um, then for the Bible story, Jeremy's going to go through the stories of the acts with the kids. Oh, wow. So like, so they, these people were looking back or forward and now they're, they're looking back. Jesus is resurrected. The church is starting. What does this look like? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it should be a, cool year, I think. Yeah, well, it's so great. I mean, I I love how you said that, you know, he walked through all the stories that God brings out in Hebrews chapter 11. So, okay, you're, they're memorizing it, they're memorizing it, but then he's putting meat on the bones by Mm -hmm. going through each of those stories and saying, look what God did here, because it is by faith. These are how these people lived by faith. And then, and here's the thing that I am always um, reminding people of, reminding myself of, in terms of children, is they love a good story. And the thing oh, yeah. is, and if the if the person who is telling the story is captivated by it, because mm-hmm. it, then it's going to be passed on. And the thing is, is all the stories in the Bible are true. So it's not just that they're great stories that children will hang on to every word if the person, especially if the person who's communicating is captivated by it, then it creates in them, an adi- a, 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 for, I don't know, God just deepens their love for what's going to happen next, or then what happens. Or what What did you say? Mm-hmm. I mean, even those times, mm-hmm. I, I just remember with our kids growing up, it's like, you know, hey, hey, bald head, and, you know, God's dear prophet, <laughs> they had not read. They called the prophet, <laughs> yeah, God's dear word, they had not read. Called the prophet, hey, old bald head, bears came down to get those boys and the bears were real. My point is, is like, you know, and I've seen this with Grant. I've seen this with, and I'm talking about Grant, you know, Grace Anna's husband, Grant, with her with kids, because my Grant doesn't have kids yet. But, but I've just seen in the the in in Jeremy and Jordan, you know, loving the Word of God, and then of course you and Grace Anna and Maureen loving it, and then people are attracted sometimes, and especially children, when the person who's presenting it 
is captivated by it. Yeah. When it is yeah. not just like, oh, I'm just going to let me just read God's word to you. No, it's yeah. just like, you know, it's like it gets into you and then you turn around and they love the stories. The stories will stand alone if you just share them. But how much more when, you know, it's like, y'all know that what well, happened. And, and just, I mean, like I, I've already confessed this that I'm, I'm not very, I, I forget things. I forget <laughs> things very easily and don't make connections. But even though I'm reading the Bible for, you know, not the first time again, yeah. even going through like first and second, Chron- I've been... I've even wrapped up and like, oh, like I want to know what's going to happen. Exactly. Like, are they going to relent? <laughs> or is it going to, you know, is this person going to repent and then like humble himself before the Lord, or is he going to just get destroyed, or what's going on here? So, yeah, I mean, it is. It is unlike we. So I was actually I'm doing a little. It's like a, a Bible study, but like a relationship study. It's it's ever like this our assignment is reading Ephesians chapters one through three and and writing that thing. So it's not this isn't a pure Bible study, but it's like mm-hmm. a Bible study plus this relationship workbook. And um talking this is for teenage girls. Mm-hmm. And we're doing it mm-hmm. like every other Wednesday night. And one of them was talking about just doubts, like mm-hmm. how do we even know that this isn't made up, that this is true. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about that and Amongst other things, besides talking about how, you know, the earth is basically declaring his glory. Mm-hmm. And so you can look around and, and, and see evidence of, of the truth of who God says he is. I said, just read the Bible. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. There, it is. I've read a lot of books. I've read a lot of the great books. I've read, you know, amazing poetry. I've read, there is no book like this book. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. is living and active. Mm-hmm. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it does, it just cuts straight through. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just encourage them, hey, like, read the Bible and try obeying it. And, you know, mm-hmm. and see if you still have these doubts. Because we always think of it as this, like, pure intellectual struggle, but it's not really. I mean, no. There are layers. There's, like, there's your own pride. Like you just need to get in his word and get humble before it. Because right now it seems like it is truly unlike anything yes. else you will ever read. That's right. Um, well, and you saying, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, I was just going to say too, this is something that I shared with the women because it can be really encouraging, but it, and like I said, also it can be really piercing. So I was reading about a David, like dancing, bringing the ark back to Jerusalem mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just the rejoicing that happened. And then his wife, Michael, looking mm-hmm. out and seeing him and just disgust, being disgusted with him. And it just pierced my heart. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I do absolutely respect Jeremy. Like he's amazing. But do I look on him sometimes with a critical judgmental spirit absolutely yeah. Yeah. and for stuff that is just stupid like personality that you sh- yeah stuff, yes totally, yeah. <laughs> it might even be what the way he played with the kids or the way he whatever you know, i know yeah, yeah, just I know. Whatever, yeah just petty stupid stuff and the, and i mean obviously i'm not looking at him during our church service and being like you know, judge, but I have literally judged his prayers before for our family, mm, you know, in my mm, heart, just yeah. been like, oh, you know, I don't know, just like thinking he loves something or whatever. Right, I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. Set myself as judge over his prayer. And it's like, that's disgusting. Mm, mm. And just God's word being like, yeah, you didn't say anything, but. God just saw that, it. <laughs> God saw that. Yeah. And that critical spirit towards your husband is disgusting. Yeah. And so, and that's not to say that I don't help him when I see sin. Sure, sure. Versa, sure. But this just like nitpicky. Being rubbed the wrong way attitude. because of a difference. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's just, so, and so the Lord used that just, and to remind my uh, reaction to her reminded me of my reaction to her and, and to his, like seeing that in his word, whenever I have like a little something cropping up in my heart where I'm like, 
just wanting to get an attitude about something. Anyway, so well, he, I that was just one small example of like God's word being not encouraging, but right, right, rebuking in the best way possible. Yeah, well, you know what's yeah. great about that, Cassid, is it brings up the. Um, the way in terms of how the Bible, you know, it's a literature, I mean, there's literature in it, there's history in it, there's narratives in it, there's commands in it. It's all uh, inerrant, infallible. And, but it reminds us too, with God's word being living and active and sharper than into it, any two-edged sword, he not only uses the commands of don't do this and do this, but he also used the narratives of people's mm-hmm. lives and we see mm-hmm. ourselves in them, you know, say, oh yeah, you know, like I see all this deception of Laban and this deception that Jacob did is like, I've had some deceptive times in my life and look what happened to them. I don't know. It's just like God uses every bit of his word to shape and mold us if we're humble and teachable. And, you know, a- again, reading through the Bible or listening through the Bible or whatever, you when you do those things, there's areas of God's word that you might not have read if you were just doing a Bible study, so to speak. Yeah, but yeah, but you're here. Yeah, because even, and I, I can't remember where I shared this, but, you know, I taught Psalm 8 today at Woman's Life. This is Wednesday afternoon as we're recording this. And I mean, it was just so great. But even with my Bible reading plan that I'm doing, you know, Psalm 144, it just hit me. Maybe I've read it before, but it hit me that David asked the same question in Psalm 144 that he asked in Psalm 8. But it hit me like a ton of bricks, you know, like, oh, that's this, you know, this is David. I don't know what time of life because I haven't studied Psalm 144, you know, because m- most people think Psalm 8 was written during an earlier part of his life. So I don't know. But I'm just saying that is there's things in God's word when you like you're reading it through in a two year plan, you've read it through before. But there are things that we might not have be studying, but are just like with with Michael, David's wife. You, it's just like God brings it to your mind. And, and if we're open and teachable and our hearts are pliable before him, he's going to use it in our lives. And then it becomes like, again, you turn around and you're able to teach that to your children because that mm-hmm. those are your little disciples that are in your home. And you're as you walk by the way, as you sit, as you rise, conversations are going to come up. And the other thing I wanted to say that I loved what you said when you were talking about um I think it, when you were saying, uh, oh, about the teenager who has doubts and you were saying, hey, you know, sometimes if you just read God's word and obey it, it immediately made me think of one of my favorite verses in all the Bible is John 14, 21. You know, when, when Jesus says, you know, he who has my commands and obeys them, he's the one who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father. And then he says, and I will love him. We know he already loves us, but it's a deeper type you know, and I will show myself to him. So how much more is he going to um, deal with those doubts? That's what made me think of it is because mm-hmm. God, as we obey his commands, as we keep his word, not only does it show that we love him and he loves us, but then he's going to just continue to get uh, to, to calm our doubts and to reach down in, mm-hmm. and to deal with those things. Mm-hmm. And that's what the word of God does. It's like. It's just like all over the map on our souls, you know, it's like. Totally. (laughs) And it's just such a long, slow process. I mean, there can be these moments like lightning bolt moments where you see Mm -hmm. something and and by the power of God, you just change, you know. But a lot of it is just the regular. Day in and day out. (laughs) Paper, a day in, day out of just, you know, like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, you were you were wanting to fret about this, but actually, look at the example here. Like he, you know, they're gonna they're gonna come up against you in battle. Um, Sennacherib's on his way, but but the one who we have is greater than these idols they have. Mm-hmm. And so and you're like, oh yeah, like I'm worried about this thing with school or this thing with whatever but like the one who is with me is greater than anything in the world so Mm -hmm. I you know just these little reminds where it's like we're just shifting yeah we're not being conformed to the world but we're being transformed by the renewing of our minds like it's not because that's what happens naturally we're in the world and we're like it's just having an effect on us and so we're not in the word gonna we're gonna just drift into whatever the the spirit of the age is yeah and so we've got to be actively pursuing time in god's word to just get our head straight exactly um 
but yeah, yeah, no, it's been, it is, it is a huge gift well, to have this. Yeah. I mean, all the stuff you're saying is just so good. I and mean, it just, again, makes me think of even Psalm 1 when you're talking about, if we don't stay in it, we're going to be drifting in it. Just immediately made me think of like Psalm 1, you know, it's like that's that, that, progression you see in those verses is how blessed is a woman who does not well i said woman man woman it's it it covers them both (laughs) Uh it does not you know walk stand sit and it's just yeah Yeah. and and it's like progression if you're listening to the counsel of the world and then you're going to pause and you're going to take it in a little bit more and then it's before long and then you're hanging out there that's (laughs) right and you're even not only are you scoffing at the things of god but even Mm. christians can end up scoffing at other christians who have a higher standard than they do you know you know that is so funny I so there was recently I heard someone um talking about parents who didn't let their kids do this read this certain book Mm -hmm. and and this parent was scoffing and this was a Christian parent scoffing at other Christian parents Mm. and I thought are you serious like why would you have a problem with that Mm -hmm. whenever someone has standards that might be like the line is further than my standards or something I am either like a well I need to consider my own standards like Mm -hmm. God calls us to holiness I want to know why they're drawing the line there that's something for me to consider Mm -hmm. and then b even if I do like disagree I'm like well I'm just kind of like, praise God, they're trying to honor yeah. him with their lives. Yeah. And also, thank you for conveniently being stricter than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true, though, because we shouldn't scoff at people. You know, if their heart is to please the Lord and they're trying to just obey the Lord, because we're not, I'm not talking about legalistic people who are trying, you're trying to earn God's acceptance. We're not even yes, talking about that. No, we're talking about no. people who have an honest to goodness heart. They just want to please the Lord and they have, you know, we're not going to do that. It's just, and for other Christians to make fun of that and scoff at it, the fault is with them. You know, not with the person, you know, and, and yeah, it should be like what you said. It's like, well, maybe there is something I should consider, or I just need to be praise God that they want that, that they want to honor the Lord with their lives. Yeah. And that's even, I do think too, the more you're in God's word, it's like his holiness and our call to holiness is so much greater than I can even imagine. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that that's another thing that is not, because I, I, this is one thing I I talked about just briefly too, with the women in my church about how even things that are acceptable or kind of we're swimming in the water of in the evangelical church, there are things that's like, if you're in the word, it's, you're actually going to see, hey, this seems like this is going around in the church, but like, man, this really doesn't seem to line up with his word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so it's not even like, oh, well, you can just like, you know, go to church and read Christian blogs and da da da, you're good to go. It's like, mm, no, no, you need to have like a personal mm-hmm. time and relationship with the Lord and in, in mm-hmm. his word mm-hmm. because. Uh, it's it's just too easy. It's yeah. too easy to get changed by what's going on out there. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, talking about all these things, it, I realize where we are in our time here. But, um, you know, I, I was thinking about um, Second Peter when another time something that you said made me think of second Peter. And it wasn't when we were like talking about Peter, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but uh, it reminded me of this passage where, um, you know, he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. And here's the verse that I r- was thinking about, especially For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. 
And then he continues and says, Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, Christian love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, he goes on and talks about if you don't have them. But the thing that 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 I think about so much when he says, for by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. And it's like, so much in our Christendom, evangelical Christians, like, but we don't really know them because we don't know his word. You know, the more you know his word, the more he imparts and you see his precious and magnificent promises. And that's where we're going to learn godliness. That's where we're going to find that we have everything we need for life and godliness. And that's also going back to what you said about obedience, even in covering our doubts. But not only that, the obedience grows us up in our faith because, you know, and then when he says, and all those qualities there, you know, these qualities, and then you look at the list and you think, wow, those are, that's a lot of qualities. (laughs) A lot of qualities. Yeah. But his promise is that we won't be unfruitful. We won't be useless. But Mm -hmm. so many of us don't take it seriously. It's like, sometimes I feel like, Kesson, as long as I've lived, it's like, I want to know more of your precious and magnificent promises. There's so many I don't know. And I want mm-hmm. to grow in that. How am I going to grow in that? In his word. I'm not going to get it from the, the the random books out there that everybody says I should be reading. I'm not going to get it from random, mm-hmm. you know, uh, um, trendy television shows. I'm not going to get it from that stuff. Or even what we were talking about earlier about the Bible stories and making them come alive and the truth that's in God's word, you know, will walk watch, you know, when you were talking about a story and, and maybe I'd read it before, maybe I hadn't, but I think about just in our culture, how women will watch, you know, some movie that they love over and over and over and children too. But it's like, we should feel that way too about the scripture, you know, yeah, Yeah, the the word. word. Yeah. And it's not just, it's it's reading it and it's uh putting it into practice. That's right. I mean, that's, which is exactly what that said. That's like perfect passage for this, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's like, and that's what even I was encouraging them. And this even with myself when I'm overwhelmed, just, just Christ came. He was the perfect act. You can't do this perfectly. Mm-hmm. But just like, you know, obey and see what happens. Like, you're <laughs> exactly. not going to do it perfectly. But just like take that little atrophied muscle and just like, you know, like use a little one pound weight of obedience. <laughs> and just, you know. And, because we're and in it for the long haul. Step. And that's what is going to, that's what's going to grow us. Because the yep. knowledge of the word is not just knowing it, but it's knowing it by knowing it because you're obeying it and you're seeing God's faithfulness. That's right. That's um, right. And then you get stronger over the long haul. Like, when, you know, exactly. earlier when you said something about, it's not, did you use, did you use the phrase lightning bolt moment or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not everything's like that. It's kind of like, I don't know why, but I made the connection in my head about all this strength training that I've been doing yeah, and, and learn. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like suddenly, oh, I'm going to start strength training and then I can suddenly, all of a sudden, deadlift all this way. Hundreds of pounds no. above your head. <laughs> it's so, like this yeah. long, arduous plan that, oh, I'm just going to stick with this. And over time, it's like, what? I can, you know, because of little bit, little by little, you know, precept upon precept, hair a little, there a little, you just stay at it. Consistency is king and it's consistency is king in the word of God, just staying with it, you know, and asking God. And he, he says he's our teacher. He's our helper. He illumines the truth to us. And sometimes we forget that, that we come to the word of God. I don't understand this. Well, have we asked the God, the Holy Spirit, yes. who lives inside of us to help us understand he promises it. promises to give us wisdom. That's right. If we ask for wisdom, he'll give it, yeah. That's right. Oh, Kessa, this has been good. I could talk for another hour, yeah. but I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to have you close us out with a prayer. And when you hear, you know, I'll, I'll start cueing the music and then, yeah. so go ahead. Thank you. Lord, we praise you. We praise you that you, you didn't just make us, and you didn't just rescue us uh, when when we separated ourselves from you and were in rebellion against you, but you left us your word and your spirit to understand it. God, I pray that more and more women 
would turn from the wisdom of the world and that they would seek your word and that it would be bread to them. God, I pray that um, your living and active word would do its work in the lives of believers in the church. I pray that the church would uh, gather around your word, that the preaching would be from your word, Lord, and that it would do its good work and we would grow in wisdom and godliness and that you might be glorified in all the earth. And I ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. If you enjoyed this episode of Rare But Real, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is posted. And share this podcast with friends. Follow Audrey on Instagram and Facebook at Mothering From The Heart. And listen to all her messages on the Search the Scriptures app.